Hi, Glenn here at the workshop at the gardens. We have the new 881, the Magnum by Steel. You know it by now, yes, it's the biggest uh, production chainsaw out there. 121.6, that's why they say 122, CC 78 horsepower. It's a mean big bugger, it's fun, it's cool. We're gonna start the break-in process. I've idled it a couple of times, I've run it a couple of times. Enough of that, let's hear this thing hum. Wow, that is pretty awesome. Those are my first cuts. Wow, that's a lot of chainsaw. Perfect little opportunity to do the break-in kind of in there. As I, Before I even get started that much, I won't even say that much, but before we get started, everybody has their idea of exactly how you should break a chainsaw in. Leave me a comment down below. I'm gonna show you what I do, which isn't anything probably that you don't do, but if you have something special, leave me a comment, help others out, help me out, showing what I do, don't wanna do anything wrong, but let's talk about it. So, pretty simple, I've idled it a couple of times, not that much, you know, no, I haven't run four tanks of gas in at a medium idle or anything like that. I am running, uh, HP Ultra, that is the steel gas. I do mix it just a teeny bit rich. I'm lazy, so I get the two and a half gallons. I mix up five gallons at a time. And then what I do is just uh, drain these into another little container and probably add another two or three ounces into um, the mix. So I'm running just a titch rich during this break in. Don't want to run too rich because I've heard that you're going to get too much carbon buildup. Again, if you know something, leave me a comment down below. Uh, picked up a handful of red oak logs, just cutting the ends off. This is, we didn't do the, the dropping of them, so it had some uh, stress cracks from the fall, which is a bummer. We'll end up milling around it, but I wanted to get fresh cuts on them, clean up the edge so we can... Um, anchor seal them because they're going to be sitting here for a while. All right, I'm going to go get another log.
<laughs> so those that know me, there's not a oil resort reserve that I can't overfill. I'll do it at some point. Not this time. Topped it off and had a little mixed. So halfway through a first tank, second tank. And that is a big oak tree. Well, there you go. <laughs> wow. That is just one heck of a cool, awesome saw. I've run an 880 before. I have a 661. That thing is amazing. Uh, breaking it in. Again, leave me a comment down below what you do. Always want to learn. Hopefully, I don't have to. Well, it'd be fun to get another one of these soon. Um, but, so I've idled it, let it warmed up a little bit, made a couple of cuts. And then I made three of these cuts. Pretty amazing piece of red oak here. Um, but trying to heat it up, get it there. Then the three cuts in a row. I'm gonna do a couple more cuts. I have just a little bit more to get to a flush thing. I left this one over 14 feet long so I could actually do this when we got back here. Uh, so I'll probably do two or three more cuts. Really aggressive, big uh, 404 chain on here full chip wow grabbing it but my end use is going to be for a big Granberg mill do, we're gonna do a 72 inch Granberg mill uh, here in Minnesota besides cottonwoods and silver maples we don't get anything that big so with six feet of uh, capacity just under six feet of capacity with the Granberg I, I'll be able to mill a fair amount of wood so when I get the mill all set up make sure that you 
check out that video. I will put a card up there, 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 for uh, the mill that's going on this. I'll also be setting up a 60 inch, so just a five foot mill on my 661, but that's a .325. We'll talk more about that later. And if you've noticed, there's a nice little wood miser LT15 wide sitting over there in the sawmill shed. So we got a lot happening here in the log yard. Uh, that's about it. Let's cut a few more baby cookies.